What's the problem of swearing to God that you did? Do you believe in God? You want me to knock you in the head? Well, I want you to, I want you to swear Get to God on the Bible me. that you walked on the moon. If you walked on the moon, we're given the opportunity to swear to God that you walked on the moon. I'm going to give you the opportunity to get the hell knocked out of you. Don't leave me alone. I got to a point on uh, on my two flights to the moon, particularly my last flight, where I actually lived, actually made the moon my home for over three days. You know, you be, you, you become detached from one planet. You become detached from Earth which is your identity with reality. But well, we launched at night at a circle of the Earth about uh, one and a half times and headed out to the moon for a three-day voyage when we got there. So the engine is loud? You get, you get, pardon? Is the engine loud as you're descending? It, well, the engine is very loud. It's very difficult to tell the difference between feeling sound and hearing sound, but yes, it's loud. When you were in it, you couldn't hear it in the vacuum of space. It's, it's a very kinetic, very dynamic period of about 10 to 12 minutes, and you get down to 200 feet, and you go through an area where you're either going to land or you're basically going to crash. So is the Earth, I guess, is six times bigger than Earth, the Moon is from Earth? The, the, is Earth right? the Earth is about four times bigger than a full Moon looks like to us from Earth. It was very close to the horizon on Apollo 17, and that was unique for us. We didn't have to look up like most of the other flights from most of the other landing sites were to look at the Earth. I mean, I just glance over my shoulder, and there's the Earth. It was there all the time. It was so prominent. It was almost involuntarily while you're going about your work and being a lunar geologist and exploring and driving a rover, you'd always be confronted by the Earth itself. It was, I tell you what, it was almost like a security blanket uh, because you knew it was there. Uh, it, 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 was the, it was the warmth that accompanied your visit to another planet. For instance, uh, our lunar module, when we lifted off the surface, had to burn for 7 minutes and 14 seconds. And that's just light off. Only one engine. Uh, you know, we had redundant or backup valves, and, but only one engine, one set of propellant tanks. It had to light off and had to burn for 7 minutes and 14 seconds. If it quit earlier than 7 minutes and 7 seconds, we came back down to the moon. Uh, and there was no rescue. So there was no strange phenomenon going through the belts of any kind. No, nothing no, happened. No, there was no, 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 no great unknowns. No science fiction uh, going to the moon. It was all science fact. Although sometimes it seemed like it was science fiction. I saw a CNN report about three years ago. The space shuttle went to about 365 miles, and that was the closest they got to the belts since the moon missions went through them. And they were about. I guess 650 miles away from the belts and they reported that it was more dangerous than previously believed and that when they were 650 miles away inside a shielding better than you guys used they could see the radiation with their eyes closed going through their skulls and the retinas of their closed eyes. Well, I, I don't know about the shuttle. The shuttle doesn't have the capability to go very far, uh, 400 miles, I don't know exactly where the Bell Ellen Quiet. Hey. 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 Quiet. You know, the shuttle doesn't have the capability to, to fly very far away from Earth, uh, maybe three, four hundred miles. Uh, I don't know exactly how far out the radiation Van Allen belt is. It, it didn't seem to bother us very much. Did you see shooting stars? Uh, but. Uh, Did you see the shooting stars? Yeah, I'm getting to that. Oh, okay. But. Uh, uh, there's a lot of noise going on. It, so I, I, don't, I don't know the results of some of the experiments they've conducted. The point is they can't get that far from here, and, and they're really in the protective confines of the Earth, uh, outside the atmosphere, certainly. Now, on the way to the moon, we did conduct a lot. We didn't just, we weren't passengers away to the moon. We're passengers. We conducted all kinds of experiments, and, and one of them was an experiment where we closed our eyes, and then we put some light-sensitive pads on our eyes, and we could literally, yes, we could see, we could see traces of radiation or traces of something going through our eyes. We conducted this experiment both going to the moon and coming back from the moon several times. Now, what that all meant, I don't know, but it wasn't the kind of, it wasn't the kind of radiation that gave us a problem of any kind. But you could see it. You could close your eyes and just, you could see these things shoot by. We all saw it. 
not on our mission. By the way, they hadn't been discovered yet. We did it on more than one mission. I guess he knew Von Braun, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. They found a publication of his that he did prior to the, prior to the goal being set to go to the moon. And in it, he says, it is commonly believed that man will fly directly from the Earth to the moon. But to do this, we would require a vehicle of such gigantic proportions that it would prove an economic impossibility. Calculations have been carefully worked out on the type of vehicle we would need for the nonstop flight from the Earth to the moon and to return. The figures speak for themselves. Three rockets would be necessary. Each rocket ship would be taller than the Empire State Building, 1,250 feet, and weigh about 10 times the tonnage of the Queen Mary, or some 800,000 tons. Now, the Saturn V rocket weighed 2,500 tons. Now, that's a difference of 32,000 percent. How do you explain that that change was made within a three-year period? All right, is this a Bible? Yeah, absolutely. It's I my think Bible. this is ludicrous, and I want you to put that on film. It's ludicrous. I swear... Under penalty of perjury? I Swerge, swear under penalty of perjury, treason, and, treason, and eternal damnation. And eternal damnation. That and, I walked and on the moon during Apollo that, 17. That I walked on the moon on Apollo 17 for 75 hours. I lived on the moon for on Apollo 17 for 75 hours. Well, six other astronauts did not swear in the Bible when they had the opportunity. Well, that's fine. I probably, you know, why they didn't? The same reason I almost didn't, because it's absolutely ludicrous for you to ask me that. I, I, I probably would have done what the other six did because I'm just as stubborn as anybody else. And I said, I don't need to prove to you that I went to the moon. I know I went. But I did that. You can put that on tape, and it's there, and you can show it to anybody you want. You know what I did with the Hasselblad? He left it's it. Sitting, it's sitting face up to the sun without a back on it so that somebody, somebody's going to go back and find out what kind of deterioration the lens suffered because it was facing straight up. Where is the lunar rover? It's a mile behind the... How do you think we took the pictures of the liftoff on Apollo 17? with a television camera. How do you think we missed him on Apollo 16 because of the time delay, by the time the guy sent the signal, it was gone and the camera couldn't track fast enough. So on 17 he sent the signal a second and a half or three quarters of a second earlier so that the camera got the signal and we were, how do you think that happened? I've got a book telling me I didn't go to the moon that, that thick, okay? There's a book there when all, you can't see stars in the daytime and the shadows in the wrong place. I don't give a, I don't give a damn about all that shit. When you looked up at the sky, could you actually see the stars and the solar corona in spite of the glare? We were never able to see stars from the lunar surface or on the daylight side of the moon by eye without looking through the optics. Uh, I don't recall during the period of time that we were photographing the Sona Corolla what, uh, what stars we could see. I don't remember seeing any. Mr. Collins, Bart Several, ABC Digital. How are you? Good. I'm the gentleman who found the uh, classified tape from your mission of you faking the window shot putting the transparency over the window when you were supposedly halfway to the moon when in fact you were in Earth orbit? I have no idea what you're talking about. I think you must be some kind of wacko. Okay, well, we have the opportunity to set the record straight. Well, we're asking you.